Trying to make your client rich, famous, or both. Let's find out how. So what's the purpose of a blog post? Well, first of all, it's to position your client as an authority on a particular subject. It also generates interest from prospective customers or current clients. In other words, it brings people you want as customers closer to you, and it keeps those who are clients close. It can also be used to increase traffic. As we all know, websites get old, stale, a lot of pages don't change, but a blog post provides fresh material which helps a website in its Google rankings. And lastly, it can show the position of a person, which may relate to their individual's position as an authority, but may also generate interest by being topical, say, Dreamers, DACA, that type of thing, and puts that person in the news. So your first step is to choose a real-world client that you're going to write in that person's name and style. And that individual could be a specialist, we tend to think of, say, fashion bloggers, health bloggers, exercise bloggers, financial experts, that type of thing. It can be a business, a local company, a restaurant. It could be a nonprofit organization. It also could be a government entity, such as an agency within Miami-Dade County government. And lastly, it could be an educational institution, such as FIU. Second step is to choose a topic and a writing style. So for example, let's look at fashion. You could have fashion forecasting, what's big for spring, or fashion instruction, such as how to properly use makeup or hair color. Looking at travel, again, it could be a list of places to go this spring or this summer. It could be instruction, like how to get the best deals when you do travel. Now you're ready to write. You have your client, you've picked your topic. So you're going to put 400 to 500 words together on a current topic. You're going to inform and entertain the reader. We have two purposes here. One is to educate. One is also to make the time worth spent so we don't feel like we're reading someone's academic paper. As part of that, that post should be worthy of sharing. The information should be valuable enough but it should also be entertaining enough that people will want to send it to other folks. Of course, it has to be supported with facts, surveys, research. We're not doing conspiracy theory work here. Write with style to show the personality of the person. Step four, you're also going to write a headline just as you did with the press release. And you're going to have a summary of 160 characters that would help the reader discover the post and four keywords. Let's look at an example. So you can see here in this one here lifted right out of a Google search, how to fix every common zipper problem from Lifehacker. That is very benefit oriented. That can help me. The summary is written in complete sentences. It isn't chopped at the beginning or the end. And in this post, you would have four keywords all related to the topic, a stuck zipper, zipper problem. These are the kinds of things that people would enter into a Google search and they, this result would come back up. And notice that the fourth one is the blogger's name because you always want to have that in there so that people connect a zipper repair with Lifehacker or whatever it is for your client. So what's the difference between a blog post and a web page? The key is that a blog post is topical. It should be about something that's happening today. So for example, we talk about fake news or dreamers. Okay, a website has more permanence. It tells you things that you could use all the time, like how to get to campus and by avoiding I-95. How are they different in purpose? So they, while both draw traffic to a website, the blog post establishes a person, as we talked about before, subject matter expert. A web page would give information that's rather static and therefore would be more to establish credentials. The writing style is also different. A website page is neutral. In other words, it's informational. A post has more opinion and style and a little bit of irreverence. Client needs both of those because they deform different ways of interacting with the website. 
One is to get information. The other one is to be entertained, educated on something that's topical and worthy of sharing today. Now you have a picture of what you're going to write. Let's talk about ways to make it highly read and highly shared. So clearly the most important thing here is going to be an attention getting headline. Without a strong headline, you're not going to get people to read. So you'll see here from the statistics, eight out of 10 people will read the headline copy, but only two out of 10 will read the rest. That's because the title or headline is what gets them going. So what kind of headlines are going to get them to go beyond just that top line? One technique is surprise. Another is to ask a question, thereby engaging the person. You can fill in their sense of curiosity. You can express things in a negative form. This is probably something you wouldn't do with a web page, but it works with a blog post. You can do a how-to, just like the zipper example. And you can use numbers. People love six tips, five tips, whatever it is. And again, it needs to be topical. You could have a web page with the same kind of headline, but that would be more permanent information. This one has to be what's going on today. You can talk about the audience. A blog post is actually one of the places where you can directly speak to the reader using the word you. You wouldn't do that in a web page. You wouldn't do it in a press release. You wouldn't do it in a media alert and other things, but you can do it in a blog post. Again, being specific. So the key thing here is to engage in the first paragraph. So one way to do that is to ask an engaging question, though never in a yes or no form, because if they answer no, they'll stop reading. Second, you can share an anecdote or a question. Third, you can invoke the mind's eye by setting a scene. Fourth, you can use an analogy, metaphor, or simile. Again, these are things you would not use in a web page or a press release. And of course, you can kind of shock them with a statistic. Write with clarity and power. You can use words like you, because, new, instantly. Again, these are the types of words that work well in a blog post, but not other forms of communication. Share a story. As you can see here, if you have a story, you get more interaction. Break up those paragraphs. 400 to 500 words is a long time to read. So use subheads or a secondary image or tables and charts. So write with style and authenticity and write what you know. Now let's talk about when you have to turn all this in. If you're in the online section, your assignments are due February 5th, nine o'clock in the morning. If you're the in-person section, it's due at class time. There'll be one revision on this assignment. Label your word file with your name and the phrase blog post, email it to me at the Gmail account, and in the subject line, write your name and blog post. We do all this so we can track everything that you've done. Of course, just like with other assignments, it's gonna be edited with notes, highlighted in yellow. It'll be marked edit one, return to you. Then you'll send it back as edit two, and you wanna send that in by the deadline for final grading. Got any questions, contact me. You can email me or schedule an editing session. Just a reminder, you must have an editing session before spring break. That is 5% of your grade.